Good day folks, my name is Sean and this is Air Photography. If you have just purchased the DJI Vada, this video is a great place to start to get you familiarized with all the equipment and help you prepare for your very first flight. Because this is a DJI drone, it's very easy to fly. It's full of safety features and fail safes to make your flight safe and trouble free. Even if you've never flown a drone before, it's really easy to get up and running with DJI equipment. So in this video, we're going to cover all the aspects. We're going to go over the hardware, the software, and everything you need to know to have a successful first flight. So with all that said, let's just jump right in and get started. So let's start by taking a look at everything that comes inside the package when you purchase it. Now there are two different kits in which you can buy. What I have here in front of me is called the ProView kit, but there's also a kit called the Fly Smart kit. And basically the difference is, is the goggles that are included in the package. These ones here are the new DJI goggles too. The Fly Smart set will come with these goggles here. These are DJI's older goggles. These are the FPV goggles version too. For the most part, they're just as good. Some people actually prefer these over the new style. So it all boils down to personal preference. Myself, I do like the new goggles better, but again, that's just personal preference. But it doesn't matter which package you've purchased or are gonna be purchasing. You can still follow along as everything works identically. So let's go ahead here and we'll take a look at what comes inside the package. First of all, we have our controller. This is called the motion controller. We have the drone here. We have a set of goggles. This is how we're gonna get our FPV feed. Now here we have some special lenses that you can customize. These fit inside the goggles. And if you have a specific prescription because you wear glasses, you can bring these to an optometrist and they can custom make them. There's also different websites in which you can custom order them. And I'm actually gonna be taking a look at that in a future video coming soon. So if that is something you're interested in, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. Moving on here, we have an adapter. This allows you to connect your goggles to a phone. And again, we'll take a look at that later on here in a minute. We have a USB-C to USB-C cable. We have some extra propellers. We have a battery charger. We have the battery for the goggles. Here we have a connection cable, and this is how we connect the goggle battery to the goggles. So that's basically it. That's everything that comes inside the package. Now there are two other items that I do highly recommend you purchase. The first thing is a charger. There's no charger that comes inside the package. DJI sells a really nice one. This is a 65 watt charger. It was first launched alongside the Mavic 3. It's a really nice compact charger and works well with a lot of their newer drones, including the Mavic 3, the Mini 3, and now the DJI Avada. Of course, any other high wattage charger that you have laying around will work. It does not have to be a specific DJI brand. The next thing I would recommend purchasing is a controller. It does come with this motion controller and it actually works quite well, but most people prefer to fly these FPV drones with a standard controller. DJI decided not to include one in the box this year. You can purchase these on Amazon and of course directly on the DJI website. In this video, as we learn to fly, I'm gonna be demonstrating with both controllers. And lastly, as a bonus item, I do recommend picking up a Fly More kit. The drone kit does come with one battery, but really it's not nearly enough. You're gonna find you're gonna be wanting to fly more. So with the Fly More kit here, it gives you two extra batteries and a charging hub, which makes charging them all up a little bit easier. So now let's go ahead here. We're gonna take a closer look at all the equipment. This here is the drone itself. And as you can see, when you take it out of the box, the battery is gonna be pre-installed. To remove the battery, there's a little connector at the back there. All you have to do is pull that off. And then there's two tabs, one on each side. You just press them in and then pull it out like that. It can be a very tight fit. On the back of the battery here, you can see we have four LED lights and we have the power button. That's how we power on the drone. But we can also use that button to check the battery level. Now, when you get yours and it's brand new and you hit that button to check the battery level, nothing will light up because the batteries are in a hibernated state. And we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. But I'll just show you here if we press on it, you can see it shows us this one here is fully charged. To insert the battery, you do the exact same thing. You just slide it right into the cradle, push it in until you hear it click, and then reconnect that connector at the back. At the front of the drone here, we have a gimbal guard. This is to protect the camera during travel and while you have it packed in a bag. It just pops off there just like that. And below that, you can see we have the camera. Now this camera is only on a one axis gimbal. It's not like a traditional camera gimbal that's on three axes. All the video footage is stabilized with software and not with a gimbal. At the bottom here, we have some sensors. And lastly here, right beside this propeller, you can see we have a door and that's where our USB-C port is and that's where the memory card goes. It's really tricky to get at. You can see we can pop the door open and you can see I do have a memory card already installed in it. And we'll take a look at that here in a minute. And right beside that, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but there's a USB-C port. Now that USB-C port is basically for connecting to a computer. Just make sure if you have that door open and you go to close it, that it's in properly. If it's not securely seated, it may catch on the propeller. Now, when we have the battery installed in the drone, that button on the back of the battery that we check the level of the battery also becomes the power button for the drone. 
And when it comes time to power on the drone, it takes a double press. Basically, you're going to do a quick press and then a long press. You'll see the motors twitch there a little bit and then you'll hear the startup sound. Powered off, you do the exact same thing, a short press and then a long press. And then the drone will go ahead and power off. So let's go ahead here and we'll now take a look at the motion controller. Not everybody likes to fly with this. I think it's kind of fun. I like to fly with it once in a while, but like I said, I do prefer using a traditional controller. This is very intuitive and it's actually really easy to use. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look around it here. Uh, the first thing we have is a trigger, and basically that's your accelerator. That's how fast the drone flies. And depending on how far you pull it in will dictate the speed of the drone. We have a series of buttons around it. First of all, we have a record button. We have a tilt button, and that controls the angle of the gimbal. We have a lock button, and this button does a few different things. A double press on it will arm the drone, basically get the propeller spinning, and then a long press will allow the drone to take off. Below that, we have a mode button, and that's going to switch it between normal mode and sport mode. Normal mode basically is going to fly a little bit slower, and sport mode is going to just fly a little bit faster. Beside that, we have our brake button. So if you ever get into trouble and you just need to stop quick, a quick press of that will be just what the button says. It will brake the drone and stop it. It also disables the motion controller, so if you have to set this down for any reason, you don't want to set the controller down until you've hit that brake button. Otherwise, if you lay it down, the drone will start doing some crazy stuff. When you're ready to fly again, you just press it again. The controller and the drone will become active again. This is also our return to home button, and we're going to talk a little bit more about return to home here in a bit. Basically, a long press, pressing and holding, will initiate a return to home. And over here on the other side, we have our power button. And it's a little bit different than the drone. You don't actually have to do a double press to power it on. Just one single press, you can see we'll power it on. Turning it off is a little bit different. You do have to do the double press to turn it off. A quick press, and then a long press. And lastly, here we have the goggles. You can see in the new design they're quite a bit smaller and the antennas actually fold down so that makes it nice for packing. You can pack it in a fairly small camera bag. As you can see there I've just folded them up. So let's take a look around the goggles and look at some of the features. On the side of it here we have a touch pad. That's how we change all our settings. And we'll take a look at the settings here and how that works in a minute. Below that we have the power connector. That's where we plug in the battery. And we also have a USB-C port. And that's again used for a couple different things. We can update the firmware on the goggles with that port, but we can also use it to connect to a smartphone. Down here at the bottom, we have our diopter adjustments. And with these, we can actually do a couple things. We can move them from side to side, but we can also twist them to set focus. So that's one nice thing about these goggles. For some people with certain types of prescriptions, you no longer have to wear glasses underneath. Just being able to set the focus might be enough for your prescription. Once you have them set the way you like it, you just press in on them and twist and that will lock them into place. Now if we go to the other side here, we have another memory card slot and we have a headphone jack. The memory card is not required for the goggles, but it is nice to have a memory card in there because it will record what the goggles are seeing. The high definition video is going to be recorded to the drone memory card, but if you want to record your telemetry and what you're seeing in the goggles, you can do that as well. Now it's not going to be as high quality and the video will be a little bit shakier because it's not stabilized but it can come in very handy. And if we take a look inside the goggles here, we also have a lens protector and it just pulls out like that. Now lastly, let's take a look at the standard controller because like I said, I do highly recommend picking this up. We have an antenna that folds out of the way when it's traveling and it just folds out there like that. We have our thumbsticks there at the top. We have a customizable C1 button so you can program that to do various things. By default, a single press will start the drone beeping. That way, if you happen to lose your drone in some tall grass, if you've crashed, you just press that button, the drone will start beeping, so it'll be easier to locate. And you can also customize it to a double press, and we'll take a look at how to do that here coming up. These sticks are removable, and they just store in the side of the handle. Here in the middle, we have a spot to connect a lanyard if you want to hang it around your neck. And beside that, we have a power button. Below that, we have our LEDs. And again, a single press of the power button will show us how much power is left in the controller. Right below that, we have a USB-C connector, again, for connecting to a computer to update the firmware of the controller. But that same port is also how we charge the controller. If we flip it over to the back here, with lots of buttons back here. On this side here, we have a dial. Again, that will adjust the angle of the gimbal. On this side, we have a brake and return to home button, just like we've seen on the Moshe controller. A single press will activate the brake. Some people call it a panic button. And a long press will initiate a return to home. Here we have our our mode selector we have normal mode sport mode and manual manual is not active by default you do have to enable that in the settings and they do that just so you don't accidentally put it into manual mode and end up upside down here we have a manual switch for our gimbal so we can have it facing up right in the middle or facing down 
We also have a start and stop button. Again, this is used for a couple different purposes. And we have a record button, either to take photos or to record video. To power on this controller, it does require a double press, so a single press and a long press. And right away, what you're gonna notice are these lights flashing here, and they will remain flashing until it connects to the drone. Once it connects to the drone, those lights will go solid. To power off the controller, again, a double press. So now at this point, you're gonna to have to decide what kind of memory you wanna use. Uh, myself, I like to use the SanDisk Extreme. Right now I have a 256 gigabyte card in the drone itself, and I have a 128 gigabyte in the goggles. To install the memory in the goggles, you're just gonna take it with the graphic facing down and slide it into the memory card slot, and just press it in until you hear it click. And I already shown you on the drone here, all you have to do is pull that door away, and very patiently try and get it in there. With the drone here, I'll just pull it out a little bit. You want the graphic side facing upwards, and then again, you just press it in until it clicks. It can be really fidgety. It's kind of a poor place to put the memory card on the drone, but uh, you know, it is what it is. If you have really big fingers, really thick fingers, you may have to take the propeller off in order to get at it. Now at this point, we have the memory installed. So the next thing we have to do is get the batteries charged up, the controllers charged up, because there's a few things we need to do before we take our first flight. Mainly we have to activate the equipment and we have to update the firmware. So to charge the drone batteries, there's a couple different ways in which to do it. The first way is to take the charger that comes inside the box. You can see there's a connector there. So you're just gonna wanna connect it to the battery. And at the side here, you can see there's a USB-C port. At this point, you're gonna take whatever charger you decide to go with, plug it into a wall outlet, and then just plug it into that USB-C port. As you can see here, the LED lights are flashing, signifying the batteries are now charging. Now, if you purchase the Fly More combo, like I said, you're gonna get two extra batteries, and you're also gonna get this charging hub, which is basically like the single charger, except you can actually plug four batteries into it. So as you can see here, we can just plug all our batteries in. They will only attach one way. At the side there, you can see we have another USB-C port. We're gonna take that same charger, the one that I just shown you, and just plug it in there. Now with this charging hub, it doesn't charge all the batteries at the same time. It'll charge one at a time. And the way it works is that it charges the battery that has the most amount of charge in first. So you'll see it scanning the batteries and then it will start charging. Now the reason why it charges the fullest battery first is because it will top it off and that way you can get up and flying quicker. Now once one of the batteries is fully charged, you can go ahead and unplug it. You don't have to wait till they're all charged. Just take whichever one is charged, disconnect it, and the other ones will continue to charge. Now once you have your drone batteries charged up, we have to go ahead and charge up the controllers. On the motion controller here, you can see that we have a USB-C port under that little door there at the bottom. Then into the bottom of the motion controller. And as you're gonna see here, it's now charging. We do the exact same thing with the standard controller as well. And there you go there, you can see it's now charging. And lastly here, we need to charge up the battery for the goggles. We can use that same cable, the same USB-C cable, just plug it in. And as you can see there, it will go ahead and start charging. So now at this point, we can go ahead and we can power everything on for the first time. So we're gonna insert our battery into the drone, make sure it's connected there at the back. We're gonna take the power cord that comes with the kit to plug in the battery for the goggles into the goggles. You can see this end has a USB-C on it with a little clip, and that just connects to the battery there just like that. At this point, we just plug it into the bottom. Now to power them on, it's just like some of the other equipment, a double press, a quick press, and a long press. So a quick press, and then a long press. You'll see those lights light up. You'll also hear that sound on the goggles after a few seconds. Now at this point, you just have to decide what controller you're gonna be using. For this portion of the video, I'm gonna continue with the standard controller, but not to worry, if this is what you're using, we're gonna be doing a demonstration of it here coming up in a minute. So let's go ahead and we're gonna power on the controller. And we're gonna power on the drone. Again, both require a double press. You'll know everything is connected when this light here goes solid. You can hear that little beep, and then those lights are no longer blinking. Now at this point, you're not gonna be able to fly yet. What we have to do is activate the equipment and we have to update the firmware. And there's actually two different ways in which we can do it. We can plug each individual component into a computer or laptop, download something called the DJI Assistant app, and that will go ahead and activate each component and download the update. For many people, the easiest way is just to download the DJI Fly app, which is the flight companion app to your smartphone, connect the goggles to your smartphone, and that will activate and update everything at once. To do that, it's actually very simple. If you have an Android device, you're just gonna use that USB-C cable to USB-C cable that came with the kit, plug it directly into your phone. If you're gonna be using an iPhone, you do have to use this adapter that came with it. 
just plug it into the goggles and then take any lightning cable that you have kicking around one's not included in the kit but most of us if you have an iphone will have these kicking around it's just a usba to lightning we're going to plug that into the adapter and then we're going to go ahead and plug that into our phone at this point, if you haven't done so already, you will need to download the DJI Fly app. On an iPhone, you just have to go to the App Store and search for DJI Fly. If you have an Android device, you do have to go to the DJI website and download it manually. It's not available in the Google Play Store. Now right away, you can see when I've plugged it in, it's now picked up the Avada and it's telling me there's actually a firmware update awaiting. Now mine's already a couple weeks old, so I've already activated it. Yours is going to look a little bit different. It's going to walk you through the steps of activating. You may have to create a DJI account if you don't already have one. Once it's been activated, then you'll get the same prompt here asking you to update. All you have to do is click on it and then hit the update button. Now updates can take anywhere from 5 minutes to 15 minutes depending on the size of the update. When it's done you will get a notification on the screen that it has been completed successfully. So there we go there you can see we finished the update and we get this confirmation that it was updated successfully. Now one important thing to note is that if you've purchased the Flymore kit these batteries actually have firmware in them as well. When you're doing the firmware update, the battery that's currently installed in the drone will get updated automatically. But the spare batteries that you have will need to be updated as well. And to update them, all you do is power off the drone, leave everything running, put the new battery in, power the drone back on, and right away it'll tell you that there's an update for the drone battery. Now you don't have to actually have your phone connected to do that. Say you forget to do that and you go out in the field to fly, you'll get the message in the goggles that the drone battery needs to be updated. You don't have to be connected to Wi-Fi because that information is already stored somewhere within the system and it will just go ahead and update the battery. Now lastly, while I have the phone connected here, I want to show you another feature of connecting your phone to the goggles. Not only is it used to download and update firmware, we can actually use this as an external monitor. So say you're flying and you have a friend with you and you want them to see what you're seeing, you can hit the go fly option. And as you can see there, we now have a preview of what's coming from the drone. So now that we got the drone ready to go, before we go out for a flight demonstration, there's a few things I do want to go over. Now the first are some of the safety features that are built into this setup. DJI drones are very safe, they have a lot of fail safes built in. The first thing that you need to know about is GPS. These drones are capable of connecting to GPS and that's very important for a couple different reasons. First of all, when you take off and you're just hovering, that GPS is going to hold your drone in position. It's not going to drift around on a windy day. But more importantly, it'll know where the drone took off from. So if there's a problem, like you get disconnected, the drone's just going to automatically go back to that GPS point and land. So in that aspect, it's kind of nice. You don't have to worry about if you fly out too far and you get disconnected you know that the drone is just going to come back safely. Another safety feature that DJI has built into it is battery management. So as you're flying around, it will calculate when you need to come home and land. It'll give you a warning that the battery is getting low and automatically go into a return to home. Now you can cancel that if you think you have enough power, but usually it's a good idea if it's telling you that you should head home. It's probably a good idea to do that. Now, speaking of safety and before you fly, another thing I do highly recommend is downloading the DJI Virtual Flight. It's basically a simulator to kind of get the feel for flying before you actually take your drone out. It's been recently updated so it now supports Android before it was only for iOS. But you can download it for Android now and I believe even for a Windows computer. Now before we go out for a demonstration flight, let's take a look at the controllers and how to use them. On the standard RC controller, we basically have sticks that we use to move the drone. So if we take a look at the right joystick, there's two movements we can make, up and down and side to side. And then of course, there's combination of those movements, by example, if we're going diagonal. But basically how it works, if you push the right joystick forward, the drone is going to move forward. If you pull the right joystick down, the drone is going to move backwards. If you push the joystick from side to side, the drone is going to move accordingly side to side. The left control stick here controls our altitude and our yaw. For example, if we push it forward, that's going to raise the altitude of the drone. If we pull it down, that's going to lower the altitude of the drone. Now if we move the left joystick side to side, that's going to yaw the drone, which is basically spinning the drone. So if you want to spin to the right, you would push the joystick to the right. If you want to spin to the left, you would put the joystick to the left. Now of course, like I mentioned, you can use a combination of the joysticks and movements to get some pretty dynamic moves, but we're not going to cover that in this video. And that's basically it. It's actually pretty simple. Now your first few flights are going to be a little bit rough as you learn the controls, but it's kind of like riding a bicycle. The more you do it, you just don't even have to think about it anymore. It's just going to be embedded into your brain. Now next we're going to take a look at the motion controller and flying with it is quite a bit different, but it's actually probably a little bit easier for beginners. DJI did a really good job at developing this and the way you move it to move the drone just makes sense. Now I've already gone over the buttons earlier on in the video so we're not going to go over that again 
But basically, when you have the drone up in the air, to move the drone forward, you're just going to press the accelerator. And as mentioned before, the farther down you push the accelerator, the trigger button, the faster the drone is going to fly. So you can control the speed just by pushing it in and out. Now, while you're flying, as you have the trigger pushed in, to raise the drone up, you're just going to point the controller up. To lower the drone, you're going to push the drone down. If you want to go straight up without moving, what you're going to do is turn the controller straight up, then press the trigger. If you want to go straight down without the drone moving forward, again, you're going to point it straight down to the ground and then push the trigger. And to turn the drone, it's as simple as twisting your wrist. You twist to the right, the drone is going to move right. You twist to the left, the drone is going to go left. You'll find it very easy once you start flying, just start moving your hand around and it just makes sense the way the drone moves. Just remember at any time, if you get uncomfortable or you think you're going to hit something, just hit the brake button and the drone is going to stop dead in its tracks. And because of GPS, it's just going to hold its position. To restart flying again, you will have to press it one more time and then you can continue flying. And as mentioned, if the drone's say hovering up in the air and you got to stop for a minute, before you set the controller down, the motion controller down, make sure you hit that brake button. That will disable the controller. That way you can set it down safely and the drone's not gonna start doing a bunch of crazy movements. Now, when it comes to flight modes, it's different for both controllers. With the motion controller, you can fly in normal mode and sport mode. Again, sport mode being a little bit faster. However, with the standard controller, not only do you have normal mode and sport mode, you have the option of going into manual mode. Now, manual mode is advanced flying and it takes a lot of time to really master that. So it's not something you're going to probably want to do for a while until you've had a good amount of time on the simulator to understand it. With manual mode, you can be a little bit more creative. You can flip, you can roll. But as mentioned, I'm not going to get into manual mode in this video. Now, before we go for a quick flight, I just want to kind of go through some of the menu options. I'm not going to go through everything just because we would be here quite a bit of time, but just some things that you should be aware of. Uh, but first of all, let's take a look at the telemetry on the screen. If, if we take a look down at the bottom right hand corner, you can see we have some battery information. Uh, that first battery icon is the battery power of the drone, how much power is left in it. And right beside that, it shows us how much flight time we have left. Beside that, we have the RC strength and the HD FPV strength. So as you get farther out and you get, uh, you know, say behind a tree and the um, penetration isn't quite as good, that will go down. And again, beside that is the megabits per second coming in. And again, as you get interference and you get farther away, that number will lower as well. Beside that is our satellites, how many satellites we're connected to. You can see right now I'm connected to 20. It's a good idea not to take off until you have at least 12 satellites but preferably more. Having good GPS connectivity is important for returning to home so the drone knows where it takes off from. Uh, beside that, we have the battery power for the goggles. You can see I'm at 86%. So now if we take a look at the right-hand side, we have some more information over there. Uh, the first, we have that red number there. It says 1.2 meters. That's how high we are off the ground. And you can see once I go up a little bit higher, that changes. Beside that, we have other telemetry. It shows us our distance, our height, and how fast we're going. And it's a good idea to keep a close eye on that. You don't want to break any regulations. Most countries you can't fly higher than 400 feet. Now we have a couple different menus uh, that we can access. So the first menu is kind of a quick menu and we can access it by swiping down from the top of the touchpad, as you can see it there. There we can lock the screen, we can adjust the brightness and the volume, we can stop and start recording manually, and we can enable head tracking, but we're not going to get into head tracking in this video. Uh, the other main menu we access from swiping from the side, the back of the goggles frontwards. We get this pop-up menu at the side. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to go over all the different menu options because we'd be here forever. Uh, just a couple of the important ones. Uh, what we're going to do is go down to settings. That's going to be where the main uh, options are that you can change and adjust. The first one there is safety. Let's go into it. Here we can adjust all our limits. For example, the max flight altitude. So if you want to set that at whatever the legal limit is in your country, or perhaps you don't want to go higher than 40 meters, we can select that and uh, you know adjust it accordingly. Uh, we can also set our limit. Say we don't want to go past 100 meters for our first couple flights, we can adjust that. And the other thing is our return to home altitude. And this is probably the most important one to make sure you keep an eye on. Um, I have mine set to 50 meters right now, but you can go in there and adjust that to whatever you find suitable. It's just a good idea to have it set higher than the tallest obstacle where you're gonna be flying. Now, sometimes that's not an option because you might be flying around buildings and towers, things that are much higher than that. Uh, but definitely make sure you have it set higher than trees and different things because when this drone comes home, there's no obstacle avoidance. So you do run the risk of running into something. 
if uh, you know you have a disconnect um, other than that here's where we can do all our calibrations right now they're grayed out because you know we're in the air uh, let's go back uh, we can adjust some control settings we can go into the remote controller there this is where we can uh, change some of the button settings we can customize that c1 button and uh, that's where we actually set it into manual mode if we go down to custom mode right now it's set to sport mode but we can select manual mode there but again i wouldn't worry about that right away while you're learning to fly there's a couple other things we can do in here we can change the gimbal pitch speed that's how fast the gimbal moves up and down when you use the scroll wheel let's uh, go out of there We can go to camera. A lot of different settings we can change in here. Uh, a lot of this is personal preference. Uh, definitely I would go in there and take a look. We have our man memory management here. You can see I'm full on my SD card, so I will have to address that. Uh, we can also format the cards if we want to delete everything. And those are the basic uh, settings that you're going to need to know. But definitely take the time to go through it and uh, learn where everything is. Okay, so now we've got the Avad out and we're going to do a quick test flight with it. Now I'm going to be doing a test with both the motion controller and the standard controller. Now the first thing I do recommend when you do your first flight, make sure you're in a nice open area. Now where I am right now, it's maybe not ideal for a first flight just because there's a lot of trees and obstacles around. So I would pick like an open park, something with not a lot of people and not a lot of things that you could accidentally hit. Also, it's a good idea to make sure you've studied the rules and regulations of flying drones where you live. Every country is a little bit different. Most of the time when you're flying with an FPV drone, you do have to have a spotter with you. So we're going to start with the basic controller here. And when I take off, I usually don't have the goggles on. I like just to put the drone up and then make sure I'm not around anything get comfortable, get situated, and then put the goggles on and start to fly. Now to launch the drone, what we're gonna do is a series of stick commands. What we're gonna do is pull the sticks down and then push them in. Now you can see there that the, or you can maybe hear there that the motors have started on the drone, but it hasn't taken off yet. To launch the drone, what we're gonna do is push the left control stick up. And as you can see, it's now hovering right above us. Now I am just going to move it out in front of us a bit because it is quite loud and I want you to be able to hear what I'm saying. So let's go ahead here and uh, we'll do a quick flight. Now at this point I've got the goggles on and I am going to sound a little bit nasally uh, just because it does put pressure on your nose. Definitely I would start in normal because that's the slowest mode. I just put mine into normal now. So we're just going to move forward a little bit by pushing forward on the right control stick. And as you can see, we start to move forward. Now we can go backwards. Same thing, pull back on the right control stick. But you do have to be careful because when you're flying backwards, you can't see what's coming up. So I wouldn't really fly backwards, uh, especially when you're just learning how to, uh, to fly the FPV drone. So anyways, let's just go forward here a little bit. And you're going to notice as you fly around, while you're looking in the goggles, the video is going to look quite shaky. But once you watch the playback of the HD video from the drone, it's going to be all smoothed out. So at this point, you just fly around slowly. Use your left control stick to turn, just like I am there. Just watch out for any obstacles. And just have fun and explore around. You can practice going up, raising your altitude, lowering your altitude to get in and around objects. When you get comfortable, you can speed things up a little bit. And that's where you really have to watch because things can come up on you fairly quick. Even in normal, I'm only in normal mode here, but you can see we're moving quite a bit faster. And there we go. We'll just turn around. And you can see that H there off in the distance. That is the home point. That's where the drone took off from. So you always know where you are. Because sometimes it's easy to lose your orientation and figure out where you are. So you just have to look for that H and then you'll know where you took off from. But let's go out and we'll fly up here a little bit. 
fly away. Now I must apologize, there's a train going behind me, it might get a little noisy here. Okay, so we are 129 meters away. We can tell that by the telemetry in the bottom left hand corner. At this point, let's do a return to home. We do so by pressing and holding the panic button, the brake button. Just hold it and it will initiate the return to home. You can hear it uh, beeping and you can see the drones now turned around. And at this point, it's going up to our return to home altitude, which I believe I have set at 120 meters. So it's going to go to that altitude and then it will come back to us and this comes straight down and land. At any given time, you can cancel that if you have to, just by pressing that button again. As you can see, the aircraft braked and we can just continue flying. So yeah, at this point you just have to fly around, get comfortable with the controls and the sticks. And you got to remember that the Avada is fairly durable, so if you do happen to hit stuff, you know, chances are the drone will be fine. But uh, obviously you don't want to hit stuff on purpose. And you always have to keep in mind, unlike other DJI drones, this does not have any type of obstacle avoidance. So yeah, let's bring it in for a landing, and then we'll uh, put the drone up with the motion controller. So you can see the drone out in front of me there. What we want to do is just hover it above the landing pad. At this point, you can angle your camera down, and you will be able to see the uh, landing pad in the view. Now it's not going to be pointing straight down so it can throw you off a little bit but just eye it up the best you can. When you're ready to land just pull down on the left control stick and it will go into the landing mode. And there we go there. So that was our first flight. So now at this point we're now going to take a flight with the motion controller. Again, it is a little bit different, but uh, it is actually quite easy to use and can be kind of fun. Again, I usually like to take off without wearing my goggles. So what we're going to do to take off with the motion controller is that red button, the lock button. What we're going to do is do a double press. And again, you can see or you can maybe hear that the propellers have started, but the drone hasn't taken off. To take off, we're going to press and hold that red button now. And there we go. You can see the drone has taken off. Now at this point, you have to be ready to go because any way you move the motion controller, the drone is gonna move. If we tilt it to the right, you can see the drone spins to the right. If we tilt it to the left, the drone tilts to the left. Now if we pull the trigger, you can see the drone will start moving forward. So at this point, if you have to set the motion controller down, it's very important to hit that brake button. Once we hit it, you can see now the drone is inactive. To start flying again, we just hit the brake button. So let's go for a quick flight. So I'm going to hit the brake button. So we're now active again. Now, as you can see, as we point the motion controller, we have a circle and a crosshair. The crosshair is basically where the drone is looking, and the circle is where the motion controller is pointed. So wherever we point that circle, that's where the drone is going to go. We can tilt the controller up, and that's going to raise our altitude. And we can tilt it down, and that's going to lower our altitude. And the farther we push the trigger in, the faster we're going to go. So it's actually very intuitive, and it's probably the easiest way to learn to fly. Now I just find you don't have as much precision per se, like if you want to go through small gaps like this up here. You know, I find with the standard controller, it's easier to line up, but, uh, you know, that's just my personal preference. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun, easy to pick up. And DJI did a really good job. They just made it very intuitive. It just works really well. So, anyways, let's uh, get some altitude here, and I'll show you how to do a return to home on it. We'll go a little faster. 
go up. Oh, and I should mention that too. Uh, if you want to go straight up, like say you just want to raise your altitude, if you point the controller straight up, you can see we get that arrow at the top. That means we're going straight up. And same thing, if we want to come straight down, point the controller straight down. And again, we get that arrow going straight down. That means that we're not moving forward, we're just going straight up and down. Anyways, let's uh, get out here a little bit. To return to home with the motion controller, what we're going to do is press and hold on the brake button. And you can see we've gone into a return to home. And again, we can cancel that just by pressing that brake button again. Now, one thing I do want to point out here, um, I should probably head home. You can see we're at 36% battery. You can see there on the left-hand side, it says interference in MC location. That means there's some kind of an interference for the motion controller. I don't know why it does that. Every flight I've ever done with it, uh, even for the original FPV drone, I always get that message. Um, I can still fly a great distance. I don't have any interference, but uh, yeah, so if you do see that, I wouldn't really worry too much about it. So we'll just kind of fly back to where we are, just follow the H all the way home. So you just again want to line up above your landing pad and then point the controller straight down. That will lower its altitude. Try and line up above the uh, above the pad there as best you can. And to land, we're going to press and hold that red button. And you can see there, it'll go ahead and land. So yeah, folks, that was our first flight with the DJI Avada. It's super easy to fly because it is a DJI drone. Uh, they just make drones that are easy to fly and very safe to fly. If you're coming from something like a Mavic, you're already going to know basically the function of it. If this is going to be your very first drone, you'll find that your first few flights you might have a little bit of anxiety uh, but that quickly goes away once you realize just how easy they are to control well folks that is basically it for this video hopefully you enjoyed it and got some value out of it give it a thumbs up if you did it's always greatly appreciated don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one